Hi, my name is Dr. Jay Desai and I welcome you all to this 11th video on gauge series for metallurgical engineering. In this video, I am talking about Fick's first and second law of diffusion. So Fick's first law of diffusion is applicable in those areas, application or scenarios where there is a state of steady state diffusion means diffusion is occurring in a steady state. Now what is a steady state? Steady state means that there is no change in flux with respect to time. Means the flux is not changing with time. And if we come across this kind of scenario where diffusion occurs but the flux is not changing with time, then we say that it is a steady state diffusion. Now what is flux? Flux is a number of atoms passing through a unit area per unit time. Suppose you have this material with you, this block of material with you, which is of unit area. Now, how many atoms are passing through this unit area block per unit time is what we mean by flux. And the fixed first law of diffusion states that the diffusion flux J equals to minus D dc by dx where D is diffusivity or diffusion coefficient which is constant for every material and dc by dx is a concentration gradient. Now what is the concentration gradient? Suppose this is your material A and these are all the A atoms and this A atoms are moving across B atoms and there is this delta x which is the thickness. Now if we want to measure that in this delta x how much is the gradient change then it is represented by dc by dx. So initially the concentration of A atoms was 100% over here and it has reduced to Cf. So this was C0 and this is Cf. So if, what is the difference between Cf and C0? That is what we mean by dc. And what is the difference between this and this is what we call as delta x. And the fraction that is dc by dx is what we call as concentration gradient. Now, since Cf is less than C0, as you can see from here, this dc by dx is negative. But as we all know that flux is a number of atoms and number of atoms cannot be negative. That is why this negative sign is incorporated in the fixed first law of diffusion because the number of atoms cannot be negative. So fixed first law of diffusion states that J equals to minus D dc by dx for steady state diffusion. Now, when is this concentration gradient created or what is the re really the reason behind this concentration gradient? Why this concentration gradient occur on the first place? So this concentration gradient or the concentration difference we can see when we connect two materials of different composition, when there is a gas or liquid is in contact with the solid material or there are formation of non-equilibrium structures during processing. So these are three major reasons why, where the concentration gradient can be created. There can be other reasons too, but these are the major region, reasons why or where this concentration gradient we can see. Now let's talk about the fixed second law of diffusion. Now fixed first law of diffusion was for steady state diffusion. Fixed second law of diffusion is for dynamic or non-steady state of diffusion. Now what do we mean by dynamic or non-steady state? It means the flux is changing with time. So in the fixed first law of diffusion, we were getting something like this, the straight, straight slope. But in the second law, when we are taking the change of flux also into consideration with time, we get this kind of scenario where this is Cs, this is your C0 and this is Cx. So fixed second law of diffusion states that Cx minus C0 upon Cs minus C0 equals to 1 minus ERF x by 2 root dt. 
Here, Cx is a concentration at depth x after time t. That is, what is the concentration of the diffusing species at depth x when we allow t amount of time to pass? C0 is the initial uniform concentration that is over here and Cs is the constant surface concentration because surface will remain constant. So this is the fixed second law of diffusion. It is for non-steady state of diffusion. Now, let's talk about the difference. The fixed first law is for steady state diffusion. Fixed second law is for non-steady state of diffusion. Here, there is a change in flux. There, there is no change in flux with time. Here, there is a change in flux with time. Here, the concentration gradient looks something like this. Here, the concentration gradient looks something like this. The equation for fixed first law is g equals to minus d dc by dx, where g is the flux. And this is usually used to describe uh, what amount of uh, atoms or species are flowing through the material. And the fixed second law is usually used to see how much concentration of the diffusing species will be there after we allow a certain amount of time to pass and at what depth, what concentration of the species will be there. So here the basic goal is to find the Cx. Here the basic goal is to find the flux. This is the basic difference between fixed first law and fixed second law. Now, why are we studying this fixed first law and fixed second law? So there are applications of these two laws. We can use this fixed first law and second law in surface hardening, that is for carburizing, for nitriding, or any other surface treatment, where we want to make sure that at a certain depth x, we want a certain amount of diffusing species. So what should be the parameters or how can we play with the parameters that we can define if we know the fixed first law and second law? Then dupin diffusion. Again, in semiconductor industry, duping is very important. Now, how much should we dope? That will also be governed by the fixed first law and second law. And that is where the applications for fixed first law and second law is also there. Then coatings and thin films. How much thick we want the coatings or how much thin we want the coatings. In that also, the fixed first law and second law comes into the picture. The other applications can be if we are mixing two solids or if we are mixing two liquids, how the diffusion is occurring in these two solids or two liquids. Then also this fixed first law and second law is used for biological studies. Like uh, if we are implanting something in our uh, body, then how much should be the concentration of it? And also it is also used for industrial studies. If we want to study different things which are associated with different manufacturing or processing things. So these are some of the applications of fixed first law and second law of diffusion. I hope you like my video and to watch more videos and support my work, please subscribe to my channel. In the next video, I will be talking about strengthening mechanism. That is how we can strengthen the material using grain size reduction methods, solid solution hardening methods and strain hardening. Also, if viewers or subscribers have any topic suggestions where I can make videos, please let me know on the comment section. And if you have suggestions, queries on the content or for possible openings, collaborations, you can reach out to me on my LinkedIn profile, uh, email, or you can comment in the YouTube. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next video.